Hello, welcome to my channel. This is Floyd Humphreys. And uh, today I want to take a, talk a little bit more about the advantages of living off grid. And uh, you know, look at look at this beautiful view. Now, you know in the winter time there's probably a hundred deer that live right on my property. And uh, the funny thing about them is, is they're not afraid of people. Oh, they're skittish, you know. But they they come up to my buildings and and that, and they try to get in. And uh, they're smart enough to take the lid off a garbage can to get the dog food, cat food, or chicken food. And uh, if I go boo, they'll jump and they might back up five feet. If I throw a rock at them, they'll go ten feet, maybe twenty feet. I mean, <laughs> if, you would never get that close to a deer in the wild. I mean, this is the wild, of course, but they're not afraid. I mean, they won't let me touch them. They won't let me get that close. But they're not afraid of me. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of different, you know. And uh, so I got different cameras around the property and stuff, and I get all sorts of little critters that uh, you'd never even know was around. And uh, but it's peaceful. The air's clean. It doesn't stink. You can see for miles and miles and miles. It's not smoggy. And uh, safe, you know. People in the city, you know, you don't know from one day to the next if your kids are going to be alive at the end of the day because they go to public school. And uh, so even if they do come home alive, they'll probably be brainwashed, you know, and to believe in things that you wouldn't have taught them. But, uh, you know, that's what happens when you send them off to the government uh, mind control school. And not that that doesn't happen in smaller towns, but, uh, you know, in smaller towns when you see everybody at the grocery store and you know who the teachers are, and, uh, you know, you can voice your opinion and it makes a difference. In the city, nobody gives a shit, you know. So in the city, about the only recourse you have is you can get a bunch of parents together and you get all two or three hundred parents that are all unified and you go to the school board and say, it's like this. Either you stop Common Core, you stop the lying shit like uh, uh, that uh, racial shit you're teaching, and uh, then, you know, you start getting back to things that are true instead of things that are bullshit, and you get the trash books out of the library, and uh, you quit telling everybody it's okay to be a queer. And uh, not that I give a shit if anybody's a queer, just don't be telling me it's normal, that's all. I don't care what anybody does with their own life, but, you know, if you want to teach little kids it's okay well then you know you'd probably the world would be a better place probably if that person was dead but anyhow so uh you know it's kind of like that and, and when you're when when you go to the school board and you say you know you got 30 minutes to make a decision you, maybe you can give them five minutes you don't need to give them a whole half hour just tell them look i know that your funding comes from enrollment and if your attendance drops by a couple hundred students in one day then you're going to have to let some teachers go because you're not going to have the money to pay them. And, uh, you know, if, if it's a, you know, some schools, like in smaller towns, they only have 400 people all together in the whole school. And so, you know, if you drop 100 kids out of that school, uh, well, that school would have to close. They would have to shut down. The principal would have to go get on welfare, food stamps. And Leslie started teaching the truth, you know, you can always give them that option, you know, you either tell the truth or we're pulling our kids out, you know. But in the city, you don't have that much of a control because you're just one little bug and they don't even care. So, uh, you know, you can't, you can't protect yourself from the violence either. You don't know when you go out if you're going to come back alive, your own self, you know. You don't know. And, uh, you know, you can, you know, think you're relatively prepared, but the houses are so close together that if anybody targets you, 
you won't have enough notice that they're coming uh, to do anything about it because by the time you know they're there there's already a bullet headed for your head and so you know uh, you just uh, are not in a good position and uh, of course then there's the thing about the food shortages and and uh, if you just you know open your eyes and look a little bit you'll see that they have burned by fire hundreds of thousands of cattle that would have made it to your supermarket but since somebody started them on fire and they all died then they didn't and hundreds of thousands of chickens have also been killed you know the government says hey these birds got avian flu maybe they do and maybe they don't but we're going to kill every single one of them i know uh my local grocery store was out of chicken eggs for uh over a month i don't know how it was in your area but uh you know and even when i go to walmart there's things that they're out of maybe i'll go a week later and they'll have it but there's empty spots on the shelf you know things that they don't have there's already shortages they're just not uh, as bad as they are, say, in some third world countries. But if there's a food shortage and you're in a city, as soon as people get wind of it, uh, all of the shelves in the store will be empty within a couple hours, however long it takes people to buy all that stuff. So then you go in there. It was like, you know, way back in the uh, you know uh, toilet paper shortage you know when you go to the store and you can't find any toilet paper and that's just one item and uh, you know it's funny the amount of people that make over a hundred thousand dollars a year but they don't have uh, even three days worth of food in the house and uh, maybe not even a month's worth of toilet paper I mean you know people are not prepared they're just a bunch of sheep and uh, and a lot of them believe what they watch on TV and stuff and and uh, so what are you gonna do when those people panic you know and you know if you're in a city and <clears throat> you got a bunch of people panicking you don't know what in the hell they'll do they go crazy you know you know if you're out here people in the city go crazy you just sit down and read a book who cares <laughs> you know it's no big deal you know they can all kill each other for all I care <laughs> but anyway, you know, so uh, living off-grid does have its advantages, lots of them. Peace of mind, clean air, clean water, it's safe, no crime. And uh, so, uh, you know, I just want to give people the opportunity to think about their own circumstances and whether or not they're actually safe. And uh, so uh, maybe you live in a fortress, fine, but a lot of people don't. And uh, so, anyway, uh, that's all I have. Uh, if you got anything out of it, click like. You can subscribe. I've got other videos. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.